Welcome back, class. <clears throat> um, in this flipped classroom, I'm, I'm going to be talking to you about Manifest Destiny and the journey west that America made in the 1840s. I really don't think that you can start talking about Manifest Destiny without first talking about the Louisiana Purchase. Uh, remember that the Louisiana Territory was purchased by President Thomas Jefferson from France. Specifically, he purchased it from Napoleon Bonaparte in 1803, and that purchase cost America $15 million. As you can see from the map, this doubled the size of the United States. So you can see here that before the Louisiana Purchase, we were this territory in green, this area in green. After the Louisiana Purchase, it was the pink and green. And you can see that after this purchase, that would put the U.S. boundary right up against Mexican territory. Because remember, in 1803, Texas and everything west of the Louisiana Purchase was Mexican territory. Shortly after the Louisiana Purchase, President Jefferson will send Meriwether Lewis and William Clark to explore a route to the Pacific Ocean. It won't be long before American settlers will start thinking about moving further west, eventually all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Okay, so I just want to, I know we talked about this in class. Teachers, what? if you have not already picked up your progress reports, please come down to the office and pick them up at this time. Thank you. Sorry about that. So, I know we talked about this in class, that whole idea of what is Manifest Destiny, but I didn't think it would hurt to go back over it again. Remember, we discussed in class how it was that idea that a lot of Americans had at this point, that it was their God-given right to stretch across the North American continent from sea to shunning sea, from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. Well, journalist John O'Sullivan was actually the person who coined the phrase Manifest Destiny, and he did so in 1845. He wrote of, Our manifest destiny is to spread and to possess the whole of our continent, which Providence has given us for the development of the great experiment of liberty. Manifest Destiny referred to the belief of many of Americans that it was the nation's destiny and duty to expand and conquer the West in the name of God, nature, civilization, and progress. As you can see in this allegorical painting by John Gast, Americans believed that it was their God-given right to spread across the North American continent to the Pacific Ocean. You can see in this painting that an angel is bringing light to the West, along with the settlers and the modern technology of the time, the telegraph. As you can see in the bottom left of the picture, as the angel moves through with her settlers, she is displacing the natives that already lived on the land. You can also see the buffalo are being displaced. You can also see the three main types of transportation as they occurred. We have the covered wagon first, then the stagecoach, and then of course, the railroad. I think this painting does a wonderful job of illustrating the thoughts of most Americans in the 1840s. Texas and Manifest Destiny. With the annexation of Texas, war with Mexico will be inevitable. Mostly because America wanted Texas and the land west that was still claimed by Mexico. Finally, after continual border fighting, America will declare war on Mexico on May 13, 1846. After almost two years of fighting and the death of almost 13,000 American soldiers, the war will end with the signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo on February 2, 1848. America had achieved its goals. They now had access to Texas and all land west to California. The movement west was on. 
Okay, I want you to look at this picture. And I want you to write down, just like you did of that other painting, that allegorical painting, I want you to look at this painting. And I want you to write down everything that you see in this painting um, that would indicate that this painting is of manifest destiny. And then, next to the painting, I want you to write, answer this question. How do you think this picture represents manifest destiny. Okay, so I'm going to ask that you pause this presentation. You write down everything in the painting that indicates manifest destiny, and then you answer the question, how do you think this picture represents manifest destiny? All right, I'm going to continue. I'm going to assume that you um, have paused your presentation already and that you have answered the question and you've done the tasks that I wanted you to do with the picture. Now I'm going to explain the picture to you. Um, this dramatic image of westward expansion is a study for a mural in the United States Capitol. One of the most ambitious statements of cultural nationalism during the mid 19th century, which would have been the, the mid 1800s. Lutz, the man who painted it, combined pioneer men, women, mountain guides, wagons and mules to suggest a divinely ordained pilgrimage to the promised land of the western frontier. In the border, you can see here, these borders, you have Captain William Clark right here, and then here you have Daniel Boone, and they flank a vista right here of the San Francisco Bay, the ultimate Western destination. Above, right here, you have a bald eagle that holds a scroll. The scroll's right here in green, on which is lettered the words, Westward the course of empire takes its way. Westward the empire of America. The empire, I'm sorry, westward the course of empire takes its way. While Native Americans all around here escape in a maze of winding plant tendrils. You can see them here. Here's a Native American. Here's a Native American. Okay, so what do you think this means? We have these two great adventurers and then we have the natives trying to escape and then the bald eagle holding the scroll that says westward the course of empire takes its way. All right, let's move on. Why was expansion necessary? Well, a couple of things were happening in the US. First, the United States was experiencing a very high birth rate and an increase in the population due to immigration. We had people moving in from countries all, along, all around the world, specifically from Ireland, because of a famine that was occurring there. So not only did we have high immigration, but we also had a high birth rate happening in the United States. So the population was really booming. The U.S. had suffered two economic depressions. Oh my goodness. Teachers, once again, if you have not yet picked up your progress reports, please come to the office and pick them up now. Thank you. Holy moly. Sorry about that. Uh, the U.S. had suffered two economic depressions. This means that families were really struggling, leading us to the next point. Frontier land was inexpensive. You could move out on the frontier where you were giving up things like security and safety, but you would be getting land at a very inexpensive rate. And even still today, we have this premise that owning land equals wealth. The more land you own, the more powerful you were. And then we had maritime merchants who are people who deal in goods that have to be shipped. They saw an opportunity to expand commerce to the Pacific Ocean. Now, having noted all of these reasons for westward expansion, I want you to consider a question. Was manifest destiny a God-given right 
or was it simply greed? I want you to pick one and answer the question next to the slide. Again, was manifest destiny a God-given right or was it simply greed? I want you to answer this question right there in the lines next to the slide. I want to give um, some credit here on this slide. Um, a special thanks goes out to Ms. Furness. She's a teacher at McKamey Middle School. Uh, many of the ideas that you saw on this PowerPoint, this flipped classroom, came from Mrs. Furness's PowerPoint video over Manifest Destiny. So I just wanted to say thank you to her for um, having that accessible so that we could take it and use some of those ideas in our PowerPoint. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, it's going to be on YouTube for a while. I'm going to assign it today, which is Monday the 12th. And I'm going to have it due, I think, at the beginning of class on Thursday. All right, so have a good evening or whatever time of day it is for you. And I'll see you tomorrow in class. Bye.